What up, y'all? I'm Steve with the Elevate, and today we got a really cool Elevated 8 with DCM porcelain. It's quite different than our glass blowing, but it's perfectly matched because, in a sense, it's kind of a glass. It's it's from the earth and it's just dirt. Uh, so it's really cool, and you know, seeing the the water pipes that he's making and everything like that, it's crazy. You need to go check them out. Uh, really quickly, I want to mention, uh, we need your help. We're looking for brand ambassadors, uh, both girls and boys. We have Elevate Dolls and Elevate Gents. Check it out. Uh, real cool way to earn some cool stuff like this and all kinds of stuff. And more importantly, you're helping me and our whole team out. Uh, also, check out Elevate Veterans. It's our 501c3 nonprofit. Really cool way to help people out there. Well, let's get into this Elevate at 8. Well, welcome to Elevate 8. We got uh, DC and Porcelain here, Daniel, and uh, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me. Uh, so the first question is, uh, usually I ask, how'd you get into glass blowing? But you're not a glass blower. Uh, you do uh, porcelain and, and you make water pipes with it. Beautiful water pipes and rigs. So how did you get into this? Um, well, I, um, I went to art school for ceramics. Uh, that's kind of where I started out. Um, but in terms of making pipes, um, I kind of found the glass scene, um, on Instagram back when I was in college and got really inspired by, um, you know, a lot of glass blowers that were making pipes and that kind of influenced my work at the time, um, which I was just making a lot of teapots and stuff, but I would sort of make my teapots sort of look like pipes. Um, but uh, then when I got out of school, I, uh, I just decided that, you know, I shouldn't let my medium uh, like restrict me into only making cups and bowls and teapots and stuff like that. And I figured I'd, I'd give it a shot uh, making some pipes and rigs and stuff. And, uh, it, it seemed to translate pretty well. And, and I, I started getting followers on, on Instagram and stuff. And that's kind of story of how I started, I guess. Yeah. You know, that's uh, a lot of, uh, uh, glass blowers, they get into it, making pipes and then try to find other things like the, the bowls, the cups or something. And it, you just almost did it completely backwards and it, it to, yep, to what we right. are. So, uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, so like, uh, I know I, I'm, I'm completely ignorant to, uh, ceramics. Um, so I do know you have to fire them. And then when they fire, do they become glass or glass like, and what's the difference between yep. like porcelain and I guess ceramics, or am I just complete idiot? Uh -huh. Um, a porcelain is a type of ceramic, um, but I think uh, a lot of people, once it's fired, say that it is like the most glass-like uh, kind of ceramic, like completely fired porcelain is like essentially like sort of a glass. It's not, it's not like a uh, borosilicate glass, but um and then, of course, I once when I fire my pieces in in the kiln, I use a, a glaze, which is essentially glass. Uh, it has silica in it, and um, once it's heated up in the kiln, to I fire my kiln to about twenty two hundred degrees um, to maturity to the clay's maturity and. Uh, the glaze that coats the pieces is, is glass is essentially glass. So very similar. Is the, the glazing that, that does coat it, it's a type of glass. Do you think it's more of a soft glass or a boro glass, or is it just its own special like type of glass that really combines and works well with ceramics? It's a, the glaze is like it's a combination of of dry earth materials um including like silica is really the main ingredient but um it you know it creates a really i'll grab a piece here please yeah 
yeah, it's just, it creates a really glassy surface on the pieces, of course. And, you know, they look and they sound kind of similar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a really glassy look and, and glaze, like I said, it is essentially glass. It's, it's obviously not like, um, not anything like borosilicate, but um, it's just, you know, it creates this very thin glassy layer over the porcelain. It can, uh, can you get that glass or that uh, ceramic porcelain there? Can you uh, get it higher temperature and lower temperature? So it's almost stronger than soft glass, uh, but not as strong as Boro? Um, I think it can definitely handle a little bit of a temperature, uh, temperature change. Not like really drastic, but um, it's like, you know, once you have a finished piece like this, you can always like stick it back in the kiln and, and you, like fire it again. Um, so like with like slight changes, it's fine. But if you like, you know, just like stuck this under a torch, it would probably explode. All right. So like a really like sudden temperature change wouldn't be good for it, but just like gradual temperature and a kiln is fine. Yeah. So it seems like it's kind of like Boro because Boro, if you just take it and throw it in there, especially with work on it, it'll just blow up. But once it's up, and I know they do make, or I don't think they're as much, but a lot of bangers uh, were made out of ceramic for a while. And so I imagine- That's right. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, Hive Ceramics. Mm -hmm. So I would think making, that- uh, ceramic. What's that? I, I would think that, that uh, ceramics uh, for heat retention and heat thermability is pretty much equal to borosilicate. I would say so, yeah, yep. Man, that's really cool. Um, uh, how, how long have you been doing the, the ceramics, building stuff with it and everything like that? How long? Yeah. Um, let's see. I think about 12 years now total. I started uh, when I was a senior in high school. I, I took a ceramics class and got really into it then. And, and my... Um, my teachers back in high school encouraged me to go to art school, so I did that. And uh, yeah, I've basically been doing it ever since, so about 12 years. Oh yeah, man, that's that's quite a while to stick to something. Um, and then uh, what items did you really start with when you were making uh, ceramics? I know you said you were doing bowls and cups. Mm-hmm. And is that what, what did you first I start making? Yeah, what was your main thing that, that you really fell in love with making? Uh, first thing I fell in love with making. Man, I don't I don't know exactly the first thing. I feel like when I first started out, I used to just like fuck around a lot and uh you know, just like go in, go into, go into it with nothing really planned. Just, I uh, just kind of see what would happen. But um, like I said, when I was in college, I, I got to a point where like everything I wanted to make was a teapot, uh, whether it was like a functional teapot or a sculptural teapot. Um, yeah, I would say like that was really the, the first thing that I fell in love with making was is, teapots. Is that more of like the, I think because there's English type teapots and then there's uh, Chinese teapots. So is that, uh, mm -hmm. do you care which type of pe teapot or were you mostly doing one or the other? Um, well, I, I think at first I, I didn't really focus a lot on, on functionality. I was really just like, um, like trying to be creative, making a form uh, that had all these different components, sort of like a pipe has with, you know, a body or and a base and a mouthpiece and a down stem, something like that. I kind of, since I was like 
really inspired by pipes. I sort of saw teapots in that same way where you could make all these sorts of different components and combine them together uh, to make, you know, uh, one, one big form. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, make the body and make a spout and a lid and a handle. Uh, so just like those aspects were really what I was focused on. Um, and I might have not even really made like a functional teapot for like probably a number of years after I like, you know, first started. Do you find those are real difficult to make? I imagine the, the height of them. And if you're just working with a, a soft clay, it, it can just collapse in or something on you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I definitely had used to have a lot of trouble with that at first. Um, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good on the wheel now, so I don't lose that much stuff, but, uh, yeah, like the, when it comes to the wheel, like the bigger you go, um, definitely it, the harder it is, especially with porcelain. Um, you guys, unlike other, other clay bodies, uh, um, porcelain, they say it's just, uh, kind of like a plastic material. It has nothing holding it together. Huh. Um, whereas other clay bodies, uh, have like, you know, sand, and a little bit of grit that helps hold its shape. Um, so yeah, porcelain can be pretty finicky material. So it's a much finer, all this stuff is a much finer, like must be made from like exactly. super powders or something. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Huh. That's nuts. Uh, when you uh, started out doing this, did you have a mentor that, that you really uh, inspired you into this? Um, I don't know if I've ever, never really had a mentor uh like i said i went to art school so i had college professors there that that helped teach me and stuff but um in terms of like a mentor especially with pipes since i've kind of just i've never been in like a communal studio of glass blowers or anything i've just been doing my own thing i never really had a mentor i definitely had um like some people just like in the scene that um i looked up to uh, but but no mentors or anything like that right on um and where do you get your inspiration from in uh in the creativity of your glass or your your porcelain and stuff um i i take a lot of inspiration from uh like historical ceramics um like I make some pieces inspired by like Greek pottery and then uh, definitely a lot of inspiration uh, comes from uh, like Japanese uh, or other like Asian types of pottery. Um, and then in like the glass scene, um, uh, definitely like Kurt B. I know. So a lot of people will compare our work saying it's similar since he makes stuff that uh, looks like porcelain. Um, and anybody who like, you know, has like really refined, precise shaping, uh, like Yushin is probably one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um so I was wondering, uh, I noticed sometimes you'll do a kind of a lot of the same uh, figure. Um, and, th and that's seen in the glass blowing world. They'll make a lot of the same rig. Do you make each one individually or do you produce a mold and then do something in there? That was, that, that was a little spotty. Can you ask that again? Yes, sir. Um, so uh, sometimes uh, I see you have some of the same piece, uh, repetitive stuff do you make each one individually and get it to exact or is there a mold yeah like um let's see like yeah the the cats and the angels like I just showed you um those those are all made in a mold 
So, uh, yeah, so they are all just like exact same thing. Um, I, I got into molds a couple of years ago where I, I had never used them before, but I kind of just wanted to try them out and, and just try to have a little bit more of like a production side of things uh, in my studio, just because the wheel can sort of be uh, time consuming. And I just, I make things kind of so refined and precise that um, sometimes I just can't really make as much as I want. Uh, so with the molds, you can make a lot more, a lot faster. Um, yeah. Do you so make yeah, the molds? A few, then? A few do you make the molds and is it like I a... I make some of the molds and then some are just uh, vintage molds mm -hmm. um, that I picked up from various places. But um, yeah, some of the molds are like uh, vintage that were made in like the 50s and 60s even. Uh, but yeah, some of, some of the molds I've made um for like my small little spoons uh those i i made myself from a uh, form that i threw on the wheel and then made a mold of that okay wow is, is that like the lost wax technique how you make that mold or something or what's that is that like the lost wax technique how you make that mold or it's um it's plaster so uh you you make a piece and then um similar to any mold making you'll you'll like block off half of it or any any amount of it uh whether you're making like a two-piece mold or a four-piece mold um but i usually just make two-piece molds so you'll block off half of it you'll pour some plaster and then you'll flip it and then pour the other side and then you're left with two pieces. Um, so the way it works is it's like a hollow mold and you use uh, liquid clay, which is called slip. And you pour the slip into the mold and then let it sit for five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then pour the slip out and then what is left on the inside is a small layer um, of the slip. And how that works is the, the, since, the, um, since the plaster is uh, porous, it sucks up the water in the clay. So then you're just left, let, left with that shell on the inside of the mold. And then since it's two pieces, you can open it up and then you have your your piece that's wicked and then it requires a little bit of cleaning up uh for these ones like i i throw the little joint here um oops. uh and then like the mouthpiece is thrown um and when you yeah. mean thrown that's done on the wheel and then you attach it separately right exactly like this little piece is is done on the wheel okay. um and same with this uh, and then, yeah, then they're attached. Man, that's crazy. And then you, and then you kiln it, and then you uh, glaze it after that. That's right. Yeah, each piece has at least uh, let's see, two firings. If I just do uh, like a a standard glaze, um, but yeah, how it starts is you just you do an initial firing. Uh, with just your bone dry work. I don't know if I have any around. Uh, but then that's that's what's called a bisque firing. And uh, same with the plaster. When you when when you uh, fire the the clay, when you do a bisque, the clay is porous. So when you glaze it, it does the same. It acts like similar to the plaster. It sucks up the water in the glaze and um, glazes the piece. And then, yeah, and then I'll stick it in the kennel and then fire it again a second time. And then these have a, another 
uh, luster coating on the outside, which makes like this irid iridescent effect on the glaze. And then the gold is another firing too. So this that one has, has four, four fire. Four fire. Yeah. In it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, so what about the, I see you have, you put a lot of patterns and like images on there. How do you get those on there? Are they all hand drawn or is that some kind of stencil or decal? What's going mm -hmm. on there? Um, I think I'm probably best known for my decal work, which is all the floral stuff. Uh, that's all decaled. I do do some stuff by hand uh, if it calls for it. Uh, but um, yeah, all my floral stuff, that's all decals. Um, and like my Greek stuff. Uh, like this is, that's done by hand. Wicked. Just uh, carving. This is a, the black is a, an underglaze. So it's done uh, raw. I put on the, the black raw on the porcelain and then carve away from it. Wicked. So that's yeah. kind of like grawling in glass. And then right. yeah, you have exactly. to re you also have to refire it then after that. Yep. All right. So that's really neat. That's kind of like a, something that's kind of the same in both different worlds. Yeah, it is for sure. Um, do you have a preferred style or technique? I uh, usually I ask that in glass. I don't know much about ceramics, but is there a, a certain style or technique that you really love to use? Um, technique. I mean, the, the decals, that's, that's a technique, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, like this, some people call this like scraffito, uh, in ceramics, which is basically just like carving an image. Um, That's pretty wicked. Did you draw that yeah. first on paper and then stencil it on there somehow? Or did you just just go after it? Uh, these ones, I I do. I use like uh, an image from uh, like Greek, uh, ancient Greek art usually. And I'll just print it out and just eye it on there. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's... <laughs> This isn't like my original design or anything, but yeah. That's so wicked, man. The the design and detail you can get with that is just crazy. Thanks, um, man. Do you uh, have, usually I ask a favorite color. Um, yeah. I guess, it, I guess that would be a question. Do different glazes and different, uh, do they affect the way the, the product is going to come out at the end, how it works or anything. I know in glass, like one color melts differently, but in ceramics, I guess, uh, does one glaze affect another glaze? Can you ask that again? That was, that came in spotty. Yeah. Uh, so what is your favorite color to use? And usually that's a glass question. Um, so in ceramics, do you have a, a color that works really well and then there's other glazes that that don't work? Or how does that all work? Can you use different glazes together? Um, it's pretty complicated ceramics. I think a lot depends on what temperature you're firing to. Um, different clay bodies will be fired to um, what we call cones. I think maybe they use the same thing in glass for certain things, but uh, a cone is a temperature and some clay bodies are fired to cone 10, which is I think upwards of like 2,500 degrees. And then what I used in the porcelain is, it's a cone six porcelain, which is fired to uh, about 2,200. And then there's low fire clays as well which are only fired to about 1800 so a lot will depend on that and also like kiln atmosphere uh like a lot of traditional ceramics 
uh, will be like wood fired or in a gas fired kiln, uh, which can create like all kinds of different effects on the glaze and in the clay. Um, but what I do is, is pretty, pretty standard, pretty easy with just electric firing. Um, and the, the colors that you can achieve aren't like super, um, you know, all over the place. Like you can get with wood and gas and the techniques I use, I use a lot of just like under glazes and just uh, like flat colors. So there's not like too much that goes into it. I use just like a clear glaze. These are all just, it's just clear. Um, you know, I do the design and then it's just a clear glaze over it. So it's not super complicated and I don't have a lot of like um, fuck ups and terms of like colors um like you can have with glass and stuff so okay so uh, so that yeah. piece right there you said that's only got a clear glazing on it so is porcelain different colors as well because you have black white and then there's some colors on there as well yeah you can mix there's all kinds of different ways to do it but you can actually mix coloring into the clay body especially with porcelain since it's a white clay um we have like, like suppliers that make colorants pretty much any other and it comes in like a powder and what i do with these is you probably can't tell on this well but there is a small amount of orange colorant in this in the actual clay body so i'll mix the orange into the clay and then throw the piece make the piece um, and then the black over it is an underglaze, which I paint usually on the wheel um, if it's a wheel thrown piece. Uh, so that just goes right over the clay. Okay. And then, and then the glaze goes over all of that. So uh, the whitish orange that you see here is the clay itself. And then the black is a, an underglaze, which you can apply when the clay is either um, raw when you're working with it or after the first initial firing and then the glaze goes over that. So we call this the black and under glaze. Um, but yeah. How many layers of under glaze can you do? Is it, could you just keep doing it as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, you probably could, I think. Um, what they usually suggest if you want like a nice a nice strong uh you know solid coat uh is to do like i think i do like three layers on this mm. um but yeah the the underglaze is kind of like clay actually where you could probably take like a a big chunk of you know, solidified underglaze and just throw it on there. Um, yeah, you can build it up quite a bit. Right on. That's, yeah, I'm learning. Thank you. Uh, what's <laughs> yeah. the most difficult piece you've ever uh, attempted and produced? Uh, probably, probably the Greek ones. I mean, this one isn't super complicated, but uh, some of the, the past few Greek themed pieces that I made are pretty complicated and, and intricate and a lot goes in, into them. I think uh, on, on a couple of them, I've even put close to like a hundred hours into some. Wow. I had yeah. no clue. <laughs> I, I didn't have no clue you could put that much into a piece. That's really awesome. Thanks man. Yeah. It, those uh those i i definitely get a little bit carried away with and, and yeah they take probably like a couple weeks to make that's fresh yeah ah, that's cool um do you collaborate is there any type of collaboration i assume maybe not so much but is there anything <laughs> or there is 
I've I've tried to collaborate with some people, and I actually have. Uh, I a couple times I've sent like bisked pieces to other ceramists to to glaze or do their um, whatever their kind of application is to them. Um, but yeah, definitely not the the collaborative stuff is not nearly like it is in in the glass blowing world i wish it was and it probably could be but i think it's it would be more of like a in-person thing like it's harder to like mm. like with glass i know somebody will you know make like a section uh and send it off to somebody to you know sculpt or do their thing with so uh yeah it's a lot easier in the glass world um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely like to get into more collaborative stuff. You know, I think a collabs and the only thing I can think, and, and you had it on your page as well, is the, the whole ghost thing that <laughs> the type of collab with, uh, with Patrick Swayze and whatever her name was. And oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just kind of stupid, I guess. Um, do you think there's any way, uh, to collaborate with like porcelain and glass together, like somehow combine the two. I know you do it with the down stems. Yeah, right, right. I've definitely thought about it if that would be possible. And I've even thought about, you know, if it would be possible to like take a piece of glass and stick it on a piece somewhere and then put it in the kiln to like a certain temperature where it wouldn't where the glass wouldn't get totally destroyed. I feel like it's not something I've tried, but it's probably something that wouldn't work. Um, so if anything, uh, the best I could probably do would be to like, you know, uh, use like an adhesive, yeah. which <laughs> wouldn't be as cool, but um, yeah, that would probably be the best that I could do or just, you know, just like having just a down stem in it, which obviously you wouldn't be able to see. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so I, that was a question we were asking before this. Are you called a, a ceramicist or a ceramist? And I think you answered that earlier. You said ceramist, right? Yeah, I think a lot of people use both. And I don't know if there is like a proper, like proper term, but um one of my pr professors back in school uh, who was really uh, influenced by Japanese pottery and has actually spent a lot of time in Japan. Uh, he was like really adamant that it is not cer ceramicist, that it's ceramist. So <laughs> that's what I feel it might be a ceramist. And yeah. All right. I feel like the cyst at the end, it's, it's kind of unnecessary. Like, Sarah Miss just sounds better to me. Um, but I think like the most common thing you'll hear is ceramicist. <laughs> All right. But, yeah. um, do you, uh, do you consume cannabis yourself? I do. Yes. Regularly. Do you prefer flour or concentrates? Oh man. I, I go back and forth. Uh, you just like the plant. I do. I love the plant. I absolutely love it. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I grow it. I grow a little. Um, yeah, just kind of all things cannabis. Love the plant. <laughs> Agreed. Me too. Um, uh, do you have any uh, hobbies outside of uh, ceramics that you do? Uh, yeah. Um, I live up in Vermont, so, you know, anything outdoors really, uh, we live in a spot where there's a lot of rivers, so, uh, we'll go swimming and jumping and, uh, hiking, um, you know, typical, typical outdoorsy stuff. Right on. Yeah. Um, 
When you do consume, do you consume out of your pieces or do you prefer other people's pieces? Uh, I'll, I'll use mine pretty often. Um, I do have just like, you know, some standard glass bongs and, and stuff that I'll probably use mostly as for like my daily pieces. But in terms of uh, like concentrates, I do really like using mine, not so much for flour though. Uh, I just feel like they're more, they're more suited for concentrates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what can we look forward to in the future from you? Oh, uh, probably, probably a lot more of the same. Um, I've been trying to push myself lately, uh, trying to mix it up a bit and, and maybe make some things that I haven't done before and people haven't seen because uh, I know get, people kind of get sick of seeing the same old thing all the time, especially on Instagram. Uh, we're so but, quick to get um, tired of stuff, huh? As people, we just jump to the next thing right away. Oh, man, it happens so fast. It happens so fast. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think – um, you know, there, there'll be a lot more cool, cool shit for me to come in the future. Hell yeah. Um, do you find you still have the same love and passion for uh, ceramics today as you did when you first started? Um, I would say definitely the same love. It's probably not as exciting as it used to be when I first started. Like, like the excitement you get when you pull like a perfect piece out of the kiln and it's like exactly how you wanted it to come out. And, um, yeah, there's not that kind of exciting awe in it that there used to be, but definitely still the same love for it. I'll always, always love it. Like, you know, like the first day I stepped into the, the ceramic, the ceramics class and, and fell in love with it so do you think that uh you know maybe the next day to pull out your perfect piece is not quite as exciting because your skill set's so much better that you more than likely are going to just it's going to come out anyways now you got it yeah i think that's that's definitely a huge part of it is it's a lot yeah it's a lot easier than it used to be it's a lot more just like routine um yeah oh yeah um do you have any uh shout outs uh or did we miss any questions that you would like to to emphasize on uh i don't think so i mean i'll 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 do a shout out to to uh, maybe any of my followers who might oh, yeah. be watching and and definitely just like the glass community as a whole. Um, I feel like sometimes I'm a, I'm a little bit shunned in the ceramics community, whereas, you know, with glass and glass blowing and pipes, uh, it's just, it's always been very positive and welcoming. And, and I just, you know, love, love the whole glass scene and, and, um, you know, when I'm included and, things like this it it really means a lot you know I, that that's a really neat thing you brought up just now is that you're kind of shunned in the ceramic community whereas in the glass community you're not so much i feel like maybe that's how it is for you because people doing ceramics are maybe like glass blowers were 15 years ago because if you made a pipe 15 years ago you were a dirty person <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, I think I think there's just like still that stigma in ceramics, uh, you know, whether it's because of the stigma around cannabis. Um, I have to imagine uh, some of the people in ceramics are just like the rest of the world. Half of them smoke and half of them don't. I feel that way, too. <laughs> it's it's kind of confusing to me sometimes. Uh 
because yeah i know for a fact that like you know a lot of ceramic people definitely smoke weed and uh but they're still kind of um in the in the main kind of community it's like making pipes is a is a no-no and that that's really neat so i think what the ceramic community needs is is more people like you to to show the people that hey you know it's it's just another work of art that is actual functionable and uh, i agree 100 yeah, that, agree. that's cool um and then where's the best place where we can follow you and, and get to know you more is it instagram facebook do you have a web page uh, definitely Instagram is where I'm at the most. And then I have my, uh, my web store connected to that. It's not really a, a real website. And then I do have uh, Facebook too, which is, I'm not super active on, but uh, would definitely appreciate any, any support I can get on there too. But yeah, mainly Instagram. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, uh, DCM Porcelain. I really appreciate your time and uh, getting to know uh, a, about an industry that I'm I'm not too familiar about, very ignorant in. So, <laughs> thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having me. I uh, really appreciate it. it. Means a lot. Pure pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Peace out. All right. Peace. Have a good one. Wow, that was a really cool thing. Uh, I was really, really nervous getting into it. I got all my questions dialed in and everything for glass blowers, <clears throat> but going out there, getting into this about ceramics, uh, it's it's uh, not my forte. It's really different for me, uh, and it was really great to uh, get to to know um, Daniel here in this thing, and uh, just just to kind of get to understand a little bit about uh, ceramics. Really, really awesome. I'm glad I got to do this interview with them and uh, really learn a lot more about ceramics. Uh, make sure you go check them out and uh, you know if you aren't following him then you're missing out on this scene here. Also, we need your help. Elevate Brand Ambassadors. Looking for girls and guys to help spread the word. Let people know about uh, DCM Porcelain and all of Elevate stuff that we're doing here. It's a lot of fun and I, I love it and I need your help. So go check it out. Elevate Dolls, Elevate Gents as well as we have Elevate Veterans. It's a really cool thing to go uh, help out our uh, veterans that have chosen to help us out. Uh, remember, this is a volunteer service and uh, you know, um, sometimes shit happens out there and uh, it's uh, nice to know um, that we have this really cool thing with uh, Teresa helping out. And I've watched, she really helps people out a lot. Super cool. So uh, anyways, thanks a lot for joining us on this Elevated 8. If you like what we're doing, subscribe and tell your friends. Peace out, y'all. Elevate, mind, body, spirit.